Hello and welcome to this e-learning module wherein we are going to discuss about the effects of series compensation on distance protection of transmission lines. Basically in this session we will discuss about the basics of fixed series compensation, what are the different components and then its effect on distance protection of transmission lines. So uh, before uh, uh, enrolling in this uh, e-learning module, you must be uh, aware about the basic concept of distance protection, then it will be uh, easier to understand the concepts which I am going to explain in this particular module. So now, uh, what are basically uh, the series compensation, first of all, and then I am going to discuss about the effects on transmission line protection. So, in an AC system, suppose a two bus AC system, bus A and bus B, or you can say this is a sending end and this has receiving end. The total power that can be transmitted from a bus A to bus B is given by Vs Vr by x sine delta, wherein Vs is the sending end voltage. Vr is the receiving end voltage, X is the reactance of the transmission line connecting these two buses and delta is the angle between Vs and Vr. So the angle between Vs and Vr is your delta. So if you see this equation P is equals to Vs Vr by X sine delta, you can see that we can increase the power by either increasing Vs or Vr or delta or by decreasing x. Basically, Vs and Vr, the sending and receiving end voltage are fixed for a given transmission voltage level. For example, for 400 kV level or for 765 kV level, this Vs and Vr is fixed. So, uh, if you want to increase the power, the possibility is you can move from 400 kV to 765 kV. But for that matter, you have to uh, change the entire transmission network, entire transmission line. Uh, if the line is charged on 400 kV and you want to charge it on 765 kV, then there is huge amount of investment is required to strengthen the entire transmission line network. Or uh, the second possibility is you can increase the delta but for a stability region, for power system stability region, you cannot increase delta to a maximum of 90 degree. Generally, delta is uh, uh, approximately 30 degree for a stability region. The next possibility is we can reduce x for increasing the power flow. And uh, this reduction of x is uh, possible by two methods. So suppose this is bus A or the sending end bus. This is bus B or the receiving end. So this is sending end and this is receiving end. So this is your x. So how can you uh, reduce this x? One possibility is you can make one more x in parallel with this x and then your x becomes, suppose this is x1 and x2. So your x becomes x1 in parallel with x2 and it will become both are the same x by 2. And in this way you can increase the power from P1 is equals to P2, P2 is equals to 2P. But again, if you look this closely, this uh, second X means uh, new transmission line uh, connecting these two buses. And again, this includes a uh, huge investment. This uh, needs huge investment in terms of money, in terms of the time involvement is also high, the land acquisition cost and everything will be very high. So this uh, next possibility, how can you reduce x? You know that the transmission line uh, reactance is generally uh, inductive reactance xl. So now the possibility is that we can connect a capacitor in series with this xl and since this is minus xc, so total x will reduce from xl to xl minus xc. Once this reduces, your power flow will increase. Uh, 
So uh, depending upon how much capacitor we are using, the magnitude of X can be compensated. Uh, magnitude of X can be reduced. So if we use uh, X C is equals to X L by two, that is called fifty percent compensation. If we use X C is equals to X L by four, then it is called twenty five percent compensation. One more thing that you can say is that this uh, capacitor. There is a fixed amount. You can you are not going to change this capacitance amount. Once you have decided that you want a fifty percent compensation, then the amount of capacitance uh, is fixed for that fifty percent uh, compensation of the transmission line reactance. That's why this is called fixed series compensation. Nowadays, uh, <coughs> another uh, variable compensation is also possible through thyristorized control uh, compensation, but. Uh, this particular case is for fixed series compensation. One more thing, this capacitor you can install either at the sending end. You can install this at here. You can install this capacitor at either at the receiving end, or you can install this capacitor at the mid of the transmission line. Generally, the capacitors are installed either at sending end or at receiving end. Uh, generally, in a transmission line, there is nothing, no such concept as sending and receiving end. But at uh, bus, uh, any of the two buses, that is local end or remote end, we can install the capacitor. Because if you want to install in the middle of the transmission line, then again the cost will increase uh, depending upon the uh, cost of land acquisition and the land requirement for that uh, installation. So. Now, even if we install the capacitor at one end of the transmission line or at the remote end of the transmission line, so we can install at this end, we can install at this end, or we can install at both of the ends. So once we have installed the capacitor, now you can see that since the reactance is changing, so reactance since it is changing from XL to XL minus XC. Once this reactance changes, the distance protection, which is uh, which is set based upon the magnitude of reactance, so the performance of distance protection is going to be affected, uh, and its effect uh, effect is not only on the reach setting but also on some other parameters. So now we are going to discuss about these things one by one. So first of all, this is the same thing which I have explained in the initial slide that what are the requirement of series compensation, why you are using series compensation or series capacitors on transmission line. So this is a two bus system, bus M and bus N. The J times XS is the source reactance minus JXC is the capacitive reactance and capacitor in this particular case is installed at bus M. Uh, JXL or we can neglect is the transmission line reactance. Now, the series capacitors are used for increasing the power transmission stability. It is used for enhanced voltage control and flexible power flow. Now, capacitor, as I have already explained, may be installed at one end of the line, at both end of the line, or at midline. Percentage of the compensation is equals to XC by XL. The impedance value of series capacitor is typically between 25% and 75% of the line impedance. So these things I have already explained. Now uh, moving to the next part, the important thing about this capacitor is the associated equipment which are used for the protection of this capacitor itself. So uh, you can see that uh, capacitor is connected in the a series of the transmission lines. So whenever, if you see this capacitor, it is connected in series with the transmission line. So the voltage drop across this capacitor, we see that the voltage drop across this capacitor is proportional to I into XC. So the voltage drop across this capacitor, <coughs> sorry, is uh, I times XC. And uh, if you see this uh, XC, once you have uh, installed your capacitor bank, the XC is fixed, but this I can vary. <coughs> so this I will vary depending upon the load flow or uh, in case of fault, this I will increase to a large amount. Once this I increases, the voltage drop across this capacitor is going to increase. Uh, 
once this voltage drop across the capacitor is going to increase so we have to have some kind of protection for protecting this capacitor uh, against this over voltages so the, uh, the device which is used to protect the capacitor against this over voltage is called mov or uh, this mov is basically metal oxide varistor these MOVs are connected in parallel with the capacitor bank. So, if this is the capacitor, MOV is connected in parallel with this capacitor. And what this MOV is, MOV is basically a non-linear, non-linear resistance. So, when the voltage is low or in case of low current, it provides a high resistance fault or high resistance path, sorry. And in case of, in case the voltage increases beyond a certain level or in case of high current, it provides a low resistance path. So, in this way, what happens whenever there is a normal current flow, all the current will flow through this capacitor and no current, ideally, no current should flow through this MOV. However, in case of high current, the capacitor will be bypassed through this MOV after the uh, rating of this capacitor that is suppose this capacitor is designed for withstanding 53 kV so once the voltage across this capacitor bank increases beyond 53 kV then this MOV will come into picture and the remaining current will pass through this MOV and only the current corresponding to this voltage level will flow through this capacitor bank. One more thing since this MOV is again a resistor so if you allow to flow the current through the MOV for longer time then what happens that I square R into T that is the temperature of this MOV will keep on increasing or the energy accumulation by this MOV uh, is going to increase in every cycle. So we cannot continue the current to flow through the MOV for a longer time. So to protect this MOV another equipment that is a spark gap is used and that spark gap is in parallel with the MOV. So once the MOV is bypassed through the spark gap, then uh, to, for complete bypass of the series compensation, another device is used and that is called bypass breaker. So, this is the complete arrangement of series compensation. Generally, the distance protection is affected by the <coughs> use of this capacitor and MOV. So, we will focus only up to this point. Uh, one more thing, if you see the current I is equals to generally Vs divided by J times Xs plus Xl for uh, all the transmission line. But once you introduce a capacitor in series with the transmission line, so what happens now, your Xs plus Xl minus Xc, that means the denominator X, so suppose this is X, so that X is going to reduce. Once this X reduces, the fault current increases. So, due to the presence of capacitor, if there is any fault beyond this capacitor, then capacitor will come into picture and the fault current will be very high. So, once the fault current is high, voltage across capacitor becomes high and MOB immediately protects the capacitor. When temperature across the MOV exceeds beyond a threshold, then the SPAR gap comes into picture and it bypasses the MOV and finally the bypass breaker, it bypasses both MOV and uh, your SPAR gap and completes uh, series compensation. Typically, when the current through the capacitor becomes 2 to 3 times of full load current, the air gap or SPAR gap ignites within half a cycle. So, this is the basics of series compensation, but then what are the challenges of our line protection? First of all, MOV may not operate for low current faults. As I have already explained in the last slide, that uh, this MOV to operate, uh, the current must flow or the magnitude of current must be uh, higher than a set threshold limit because uh, these capacitors, these capacitors are designed for certain voltage level, uh, certain voltage level. So, so, to reach that certain voltage level, minimum amount of current or fault current uh, must flow. Before that current flow, the voltage uh, through this capacitor is lower. Once this uh, voltage is exceeded, then only a movie will come into picture. That's why uh, for lower current magnitude, it might happen that MOV may not operate. Uh, 
second thing, as I have already explained this also, the equivalent reactance change because of the series capacitor in series with the transmission line. Now, <coughs> the line protection scheme must perform properly with and without the series capacitor in the fault loop. Then the subharmonic frequency oscillation due to L and C and it affects the phasor estimation as you are of, as you must be aware that the modern numerical relay they, uh, are designed to operate based upon the magnitude of the current or voltage and this uh, magnitude of current and voltage are determined through the phasor estimation so many different phasor estimation techniques are used generally the finite impulse response uh, filtering is used with uh, either cosine type uh, estimation, cosine type filtering or DFT or FFT, uh, half cycle or full cycle depending upon the window cycle. But that is not the scope of this e-learning module. We, uh, we are not going to discuss about these things in details in this module. Then the problem for directional and distance relay. So we will now discuss about these problems, these challenges in the upcoming slides. First of all, see what are the meaning of current inversion. Uh, generally, uh, the if suppose this uh, this is a two bus system this is bus a bus b or you can say this as v s or v r the voltage at these two bus and suppose there is any fault at uh, any point in the transmission line so what happens the current will flow fault current will flow through this network and now uh, if you draw this v s as reference so your current is going to lag through this voltage why the current is going to lag with, uh, with this voltage is because this network, this transmission network is purely reactive and this is purely inductor and that inductor, uh, because of this inductor, this fault current is going to lag the voltage and all the directional relays, all the numerical relays works on this principle that for forward fault, for any forward fault, your fault current is going to lag with voltage. So this is the basic on which every uh, protection, directional protection of, uh, is going to work. So now, if you see uh, a network, as you, at this point this is the excess is the source reactance minus JXC is capacitive reactance. XLF is basically the line reactance up to the fault point. And the R is the relay installed at bus M. So now I can draw this as Vs, that is the source voltage, Jxs, M bus with relay R, minus Jxc, the capacitive reactance, and Jxlf, the fault uh, reactance, transmission line reactance up to the fault point. Now the current through the relay at bus M, how you can determine that is IR, suppose this current is IR, IR must be equal to Vs divided by J X S minus J X C plus J X L F. So I R is equals to V S divided by J X S plus X L F minus X C. Generally, if your X S plus X L F is greater than X C, then what happens? Your I R is going to lag V S. But once your X C increases with X S plus X L F magnitude, then <coughs> I R is going to lead V S. So, this uh, IR going to lead VS, that means your current is inverted. So, generally the current must lag with, uh, with voltage, current must lag with voltage. So, this should be the general practice. But due to this effect that XC is greater than XLF, your current will go into uh, invert. This is IFS, so inversion. Once the current inverts, inverted, now the relay see this fault although in the forward direction the fault is in the forward direction but the relay will declare it as a reverse fault and that causes a lot of problem so now if you draw the phasor diagram <coughs> sorry this is the source voltage for pre fault current so the pre fault voltage is equals to vs minus j access into i pre now, uh, without capacitor, your uh, voltage is uh, current is going to lag with this voltage. But with capacitor and the fault closure to 
the, uh, the capacitor that is xc is greater than xs plus xlf the current inverse is when this current inverse is now you can see that the bus voltage is or the vrf is going to be greater than vrp so during current inversion bus voltage becomes more than pre fault voltage and now the next thing which is voltage inversion again the same diagram again the same circuit the only thing is that now if you see here the current ir is equals to vs divided by jxs minus jxc plus jxlf this is the current we have already derived in the last slide also and the voltage vr at this uh, bus uh, relay installed at this bus is equals to Vs minus Jxs into Ir. Or uh, you can also determine Vr as <coughs> Ir times Jxlf minus Jxc. So you can write Vr is equal to J times Ir Xlf minus Xc. So this is Vr and this is your Ir. Now we are we can write as uh, V S into J X L F minus X C divided by this. <coughs> so now if you see if this X L F min uh, is greater than X C and <coughs> X S plus X L F is greater than X C, then uh, there is no problem. So the, then the voltage will be normal. But once in uh, this condition is satisfied, that is X C is greater than X L F. Xc is greater than xlf and xlf plus xs is greater than xc in that case voltage will be inverted so this is the second type of problem that now voltage inversion take place so because of this series capacitor on the transmission line there are two types of problem one is voltage inversion and another is current inversion so what is the meaning of voltage inversion so generally this is your vs with fault current irf and now if you see this is your v uh, that is your Vs minus JXSI pre and because of voltage inversion what happens now the VRF instead of in this direction it will be in the fourth quadrant and these conditions comes when X is greater than XLF now because the voltage is inverted again you can see that the relay will lose its directionality so when it occurs generally in case of three phase fault only this condition comes into picture why because in case of line to ground fault all sequence networks are connected in series including zero sequence impedance and you know that the zero sequence uh, impedance magnitude of a transmission line is 2.5 to 3 times more than the positive and zero sequence impedance so once all the networks are connected in series so the amount of reactance amount of uh, xlf is uh, very high but in case of three phase faults uh, the chances of voltage inversion is more the three phase collision faults the only positive sequence network will come into picture and now the uh, voltage inversion is likely to take place voltage inversion results in voltage phase angle more than 90 degree caused by series fault uh, capacitors during a fault now uh, what are the effects on the distance relay in the presence of series capacitor so generally uh, the impedance of protected line is modified by series capacitor and varies depending on the state of the spark gap and or MOV condition uh, uh, conduction uh, why it depends upon the state of air gap conduction because uh, initially when the fault occurs the series capacitor remains in the picture so initially the series capacitor in the picture your X is going to be low because this is XL minus XC but once this MOV bypasses the capacitor, so now your capacitor removes from the circuit and now the X becomes XL. So this dynamically the reactance is changing from XL minus XC to XL. And this change in uh, reactance depends upon the instant of MOV conduction. So when MOV is conducting, the part of series capacitor is bypassed through MOV and the total reactance will be some other portion as compared to the case when MOV is not conducting. The apparent impedance even moves to fourth quadrant in RX plane during inversion that I have already explained that due to inversion the relay might see a forward fault in the reverse direction. 
and the delay problem is more prominent for low current faults why is for, uh, more prominent for low current faults because for low current faults mob might not conduct and the switch capacitor will remain in picture throughout and once the switch capacitor remains in picture it will lead to your current inversion voltage inversion and as well as the change in impedance so distance protection may fail to pick up for low current internal faults now if you see this is mov and this is capacitor so this is the current i and some part of current will flow through the i mov depending upon the conduction time or depending upon the amount of fault current once this mov conducts in that case what happens uh, the capacitor will be bypassed and your total reactance of the line is only the reactance of the line plus the mov uh, the reactance of fault by this MOV. But if MOV doesn't conduct, then the capacitor also come into picture. So now this is our RX plane, and we know that this is the actual impedance up to the fault point. RF is your fault resistance. So now for high current fault, generally what happens for a high current fault, your MOV will come into picture, and once the MOV will come into picture, it will bypass the capacitor, and only the effect of resistance will be there. So this is the high current fault. For low current fault, the MOB might not come into picture and the total reactance is going to reduce. So now the reactance which was earlier at this point, it is going to reduce from this point to some this point. And this is due to the presence of only capacitor and MOB is not conducting. So low current fault and the actual impedance is going to reduce and the phasor move to this point depending upon the magnitude of fault resistance. In between any fault, your MOV will conduct and the phasor will move like this. So now if you see due to the conduction of MOV either in the forward direction, uh, either for the low current or for the high current, the impedance locus keeps on changing. And due to this, there are a lots of uh, problem in implementation of, series, uh, of distance protection in the series compensated transmission line. And we cannot determine uh, accurately that is uh, what happens for a very low um, uh, fault current magnitude for a very high fault current magnitude. So uh, basically uh, we can see that the major problem for this reach compensated line on the distance protection are first of all uh, the current and voltage inversion, current inversion, the second is voltage inversion and due to these two inversion, inversion phenomena that is current inversion and voltage inversion the relay might lose its directionality so it affects the directionality then the next the a change in apparent impedance change in apparent impedance and what are the effect of apparent impedance change basically change in apparent impedance will uh, lead to your uh, reach uh, setting problem in reach so relay might overreach for an engine fault and next thing change in apparent impedance and then the next thing mov conduction so the if the mov is conducting in the forward uh, in the for the low current uh, high current fault then your apparent impedance will be some other thing if mov is not conducting due to some uh, low uh, current fault then the reactance of fault will be different so these are some of the problems now uh, some another thing suppose that this is a transmission line connected between two bus with capacitor at one end. Or just uh, suppose like this capacitor is installed at this end and this is transmission line A, B and suppose there is a second transmission line C. Now what happens? Suppose uh, this is your uh, and A and your zone 1 is generally zone 1 is 80 percent of transmission line impedance so this is zone 1 which is 80 percent of impedance transmission line while zone 2 it is up to 120 percent so it might be up to this point so this is your zone 2 which is 120 percent of impedance. now suppose there is a fault at mm. this point so and this is a 50 percent compensated line so what happens suppose this total impedance of the transmission line is 100 ohm this is your 50 ohm and this fault is at suppose uh, 40 ohm that is 40 kilometer 
generally we assume that zone 2 is 120% that is 120 ohm now what happens in this particular case this fault is not even in the zone 2 but this fault is beyond zone 2 because this fault is at 140 ohm 100 plus 40 140 ohm but now is this uh, relay at end A that is relay at end A what impedance it is going to calculate it will calculate the total impedance as 100 uh, plus uh, 50 uh, 100 minus 50 plus 40 that is it will calculate it as 90 ohm only and once it calculates this impedance as 90 ohm that means what happens now this relay will see the fault relay will determine this fault in zone 2 so the relay will see this fault zone 3 fault in zone 2 and it might operate incorrectly the another thing uh, this is the one case but it might happen that suppose your fault is closer to this bus the fault is uh, this is uh, zone 2 uh, it is not a much problem but the second case problem comes is suppose the fault is at uh, 20 ohm that is 20 kilometer now uh, or for that matter suppose the fault is at 10 ohm so the 10 ohm it is basically the total impedance up to the fault point will be 110 ohm that means it might come it is in the zone 2 so this is a zone 2 fault but the total impedance measured by the relay at a will be 100 minus 50 plus 10 that is 60 ohm and now the relay see the fault in zone 1 Earlier release was saying the zone 3 fault in zone 1, zone 2, that was an issue but that was not a big issue. But the big issue is when the relay sees a zone 2 fault in zone 1. So relay now sees a zone 2 fault in zone 1. And since the relay sees a zone 2 fault in zone 1, it is going to trip instantaneously because if you remember our zone 2 time is generally, a zone 1 time is instantaneous so relay sees a zone 2 fault in zone 1 and it trips instantaneously and this type of problem is called overreaching so due to capacitor your transmission line distance protection is going to overreach but we doesn't want our transmission uh, relay to operate for this zone 2 fault immediately because of this capacitor that's why the zone 1 for a series compensated line at remote end is always set as 100 millisecond so if the capacitor is at end B then the remote end will be your uh, end A and at end A your zone 1 operating time must be set as 100 millisecond and why it is set at 100 millisecond because now uh, we assume that if there is a fault on this second transmission line so within this uh, 100 millisecond the zone 1 at this substation is going to operate and once the zone 1 operates this fault will be cleared and the fault uh, once it is cleared this relay will not going to see the fault in zone 1 another thing uh, now what happens if the fault is actually uh, at this point so if the fault is actually in the main transmission line now what happens the end A will see the fault in zone 1 and B will also see the fault in zone 1 and now this end will trip instantaneously but this end is going to trip after 100 milliseconds again this is not desirable so uh, now you can if you apply a little logic you can see that due to your uh, carrier added schemes either PUTT or POTT this uh, end will see the fault in zone uh, 1 and it is going to issue a trip command or it is going to send a carrier signal to your remote end and remote end on receipt of carrier is going to trip so generally in case of fsc the at local end this is local end this is remote end local end your capacitor are installed suppose the capacitor is installed at this end and no capacitor at this end so at remote end your zone one operating time will be 100 millisecond at this end zone one operating time is zero and the POTT scheme is used once the carrier is received so your zone 1 plus carrier received will be 0 millisecond instead of zone 2 plus carrier received in the conventional schemes so these are some of the important points some of the important settings that are used now I hope that once you see the relay template or the setting template of our target then you must uh, 
be able to understand why the particular settings are used, why the particular con uh, communication schemes are used, why we are using zone 1 with 100 millisecond time delay. So whenever there is a series compensated line that uh, and then all the substations connected to that particular substation in which series compensation is installed, so all the substation, all the lines must have a 100 millisecond time delay. So this is the basic of the effects of series capacitor on the distance protection of transmission line. I hope the concepts which are explained in this module is clear to all of you. We have discussed some of the important concepts, basically why series cap capacitors are used on transmission line, uh, how the compensation are decided, what are the components for the protection of capacitor itself, that is MOV, spark gap, bypass breaker, etc. Then we have discussed the effect of or the challenges for line protection in case of the presence of capacitors on the transmission line. Then we have discussed about the phenomena of current inversion, phenomena of voltage inversion, the effects of current inversion and voltage inversion on distance protection of transmission line, how the distance protection lose or might lose the directionality because of this current inversion. Then we have discussed the challenges or the distance protection in the presence of Capacitor on the transmission line, we have discussed the effects in RX plane, the effect for low current fault, high current fault and MOV conduction. In the end, we have also discussed about the settings of zone 1, why we are using 100 millisecond time delay for remote end and then in the end, we have discussed what happens with the carrier receive that is zone 1 plus carrier receive only will be uh, instantaneous tripping, otherwise it is going to trip with 100 millisecond time delay. So, we will... Uh, Close this learning module at this point only. Thanks. Thank you.